Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College, it's March the, 7th, the 19th and we're looking at Joshua chapter 9 today and in this passage we have um, we have a, an interesting event in the life of the children of Israel the, the Gibeonites um, approach Israel and they do so with trickery and um, with wiliness and they seek to <coughs> they seek to deceive Israel into making a false peace with them um, they took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles that were old and rent and bound up and old shoes and old clothes and old food and they went up to Joshua at the camp of Gilgal and they said to, to him and to the men of Israel we are come from a far country now therefore make a league with us um, and Joshua asks two questions he says who are you and where are you from and they they say well we're, we're, we're your servants and we've come from a long way and we've heard all that God has done to uh, Egypt to the children of Israel in their deliverance from Egypt and the the, the killing of the kings of the Amorites um, <clears throat> and therefore we've come a long long journey look at our bread it's old and moldy look at these shoes they were all new shoes when we set out we've come from such a long way and so Joshua makes peace with them amazing he makes peace with them even though the Lord has told him not to he makes peace with them and he says um, we will not fight against you <clears throat> however within three days they discover that these men came from just down the road and that they had completely deceived them however Joshua had made an oath he had sworn that he would not um, destroy them and so therefore the oath that he'd made he had to stand with all right so he'd been deceived but his deception didn't make the oath any better so they received the children of Gibeon into the congregation of the Lord however they enslaved them and they made them hewers of wood and drawers of water to all the congregation of the children of Israel he says you are now cursed and you will be bondmen you will be slaves forever uh, you will cut down trees and you will um, <clears throat> you will draw water for the house of God um, the next thing that happens is that the the Amorites decide that they will gather together to fight against Israel there are five kings that come together um, and it's the the fight the king of Jerusalem and the king of Hebron and the king of Jarmuth and the, the king of Lachis and the king of Eglon and they come together and they went up and encamped in front of Gibeon and made war against it and the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the hope a camp of Gilgal saying slack not thy servants let us come quickly help us save us for all the kings of the Amorites have dwelt in the mountains are gathered against us you see the five kings of the um, of the Amorites were not going to attack Israel they were going to attack those that had made a peace with Israel however the Lord um, told Joshua do not be afraid because I have delivered them into thy hand now that's again in the past tense which means it's not that it's not that it's already happened it means it's a future event but it is a certain event they are certainly going to be totally destroyed <coughs> And so um, Joshua went suddenly upon them um, all night and the Lord completely routed them in front of Israel and slew them with a great slaughter and, and they chased them all the way to Beth Horon and smote them at Azek and Makaza and it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were going down to Beth Horon that the Lord brought great hailstones from heaven upon them there were more people that died from hailstones than there were that died by the sword um, and what's very interesting is that 
Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day that the Lord delivered up the Amorites unto the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still upon Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed. Now, <clears throat> Lots of people criticise this passage saying how on earth could the sun have stayed still? How on earth could the moon have stayed still for the whole space of a day? Well, if God is God, then he's able to do that. Some people would say you can't suddenly make the earth stop spinning. Well, I'm sure the Lord can do it. There's absolutely no reason why he can't do it. And therefore we need to take this passage just as read. Also people criticise Joshua and the children of Israel for bringing about what they call a genocide upon the whole of these nations. Well these nations were not all righteous before the Lord, they were exceedingly wicked before the Lord. <clears throat> they were so wicked in fact that God was using Joshua and the children of Israel to bring about the judgment of God. This wasn't just uh, uh, Joshua's idea and, and, and we see, for example, in the battle with the five kings, we see that it was the Lord that destroyed more people than Joshua ever did by hailstones from heaven. You see, and also you'll notice that it is God who made the sun stand still and the God who made the moon stand still. So <clears throat> um, it says there was never a day like it before or after when the Lord listened to the voice of a man. Now that's quite an amazing thing. Never before and never after will God listen to a man like he listened to Joshua. And it says and the Lord fought for Israel. You see people say they were doing a wicked thing no they were not doing a wicked thing they were doing a righteous thing this was righteous judgment and it was the Lord in the main that was fighting for Israel the five kings fled and they hid themselves in the cave of Machadah um, and Joshua said roll great stones onto the mouth of the cave and put men by it to keep them safe and when all of their uh, five armies were destroyed they returned to Makedar and <clears throat> nobody moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel then said Joshua open the mouth of the cave and bring out the kings and uh, they brought them out and uh, Joshua called for the chief men of Israel the captains of the men of war that were with him he says come near and put your feet upon the necks of these kings and they came near and did exactly as he said and he said do not be afraid and do not be dismayed be strong and of a good courage for thus hath the Lord thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies who you fight against and Joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees and they left them hanging there until the going down of the sun and then they took them down off the trees and they put them into the cave and they put great stones on the cave's mouth and those stones remain unto this day now of course <coughs> it's the person that's writing this that says that the stones are there to this day but there's no reason to suppose that these stones are not still there today so there's a challenge there's a challenge for archaeologists go and find the cave and go and find the kings um, <clears throat> and on that day Joseph took Makedar and smote it with the edge of sword he he destroyed Makedar, Libna, Lachish he destroyed um, Horam the king of Giza who came to help Lachish he destroyed Eglon and Hebron and Debir uh, all of these places were totally destroyed not because Jos uh, Joshua was a wicked man no he destroyed them because he was a righteous man and people who say oh well this was a terrible thing listen ask them what they would do to murderers ask them what they would do to terrorists and I think you'll find or to child molesters I think you'll find that these people understand fully what righteous judgment is <coughs> 
Now my password is in verse 40. So Joshua smote all the country of the hills and of the south and of the vale and of the springs and all their kings. He left none remaining but utterly destroyed all that breathed as the Lord God of Israel commanded. And Joshua smote them from Kadesh Barnea even unto Gaza unto the country of Goshen even unto Gibeon. And all their kings and their land did Joshua take at one time, because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. And my password is that little phrase at the end. It says, the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. What an amazing time. What an amazing time. Joshua needed courage, didn't he? They needed to be strong in the Lord. They needed to do exactly what the Lord commanded them to do. Isn't that the same for us? We need to do exactly what the Lord commands us to do. Well, God bless you. Look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.